Now these bucks aren't on my unit actually. They're just across from it. You could probably cross over onto it. But there's a herd of all bucks. Little, little bucks right there. And then they're over here to the left. There's a better buck. Pretty good buck. Not, not a joint or nothing. How many times I'm going to say that? What's that little group? So I've got some antelope out here in the field. There's uh, one good buck and about five little bucks I just showed you guys on the video, but I'm actually gonna try to decoy these antelope. I've never done it before. I heard that they get really aggressive. And I noticed that this, this bigger buck is just running all the little bucks off when they get close to him. And so I'm gonna just go walk at him with this decoy. I bought like a Montana decoy. Just sneak out there and see how they react to it and see if there's anything to this or not before I try it with a bow in my hand. All right, this is Pubert. We're gonna see if we can get on. This antelope just went over the hill right here. They're right up against that fence line. They're kind of walking away. Let's see what they do. Obviously, it's the boss of that little group. I press record, this is the second time I've done this now. Um, all the antelope were looping down around me. They came to about 75 yards and they just kind of took off. I don't know if they went to me or what, but they just went and ran a big horseshoe around me and headed back up higher. The big buck was in the rear and he was definitely more curious than the other ones, but I think they probably winded me. So I'm gonna say, if you're gonna try to play the decoy game with old Hubert here, you're gonna need to do a little bit of wind, wind and avoidance. Maybe part of my problem was that I didn't have a realistic enough decoy. So, got this guy. Let him go. Poor little guy's got a hurt wing or something. Well, he's on the wrong unit, but that's the biggest goat I've seen so far. By a bit. By a ways. He is good. Man. That's what I've been looking for. Heat waves. Giving me struggles. So you can see in the background of him right there, there's some railroad tracks. The other side of those railroad tracks is my unit. So he might cross over at some point, you know, could maybe come hit the water. But that's a big goat. That's the kind we've been looking for right there. Found a pretty good pond out here. that I think I'll be able to sit on. Uh, there's a few antelope tracks. <laughs> there was um, a doe and a fawn back here and then a buck and like eight does right on the pond when I pulled up. So those are all good signs. Signs of things to come. I'm sure there's gonna be a billion cows on it. But um, it's right on the border of some public and some private. I actually have permission to hunt some private right here and right here. So I think this is gonna be a good little spot but I mean there's a ton of antelope tracks on this as well just you can tell they're hitting this water super hard super heavy so I wish I had my blind with me today even all the way across the pond at the farthest it can't be more than a 30 35 40 yard shot I think I do have a trail camera maybe I'll throw it up since I'm here let me go see if I got one in my truck So we checked the trail camera, this one right here, and a cow knocked it over about two hours after I set it up. I kind of thought I'd put it out of the way and out of reach, but I guess not good enough, so we don't have any quality info on it, but I still think this is going to be a good spot. I still think that the antelope are going to show up here to water with the limited water available around, so we're going to go now and see if we can find a place to camp that's not terribly windy. Tomorrow at first light, we will be back here, hoping that all of our moo cow friends have dissipated. We made it here, this is where we're gonna camp. It's uh, not much for topography. We just try to find a place that's a little below the wind, but. 
still plenty of wind. Yeah, buddy, we're camping here. So I got the Hoyt out and I took some shots. We'll go watch over here and see how they did. Shot at 40 yards um, with broadheads. See what they look like. One a little better. Fighting wind, but that's what they look like at 40, which that's a dead, a dead loper. The furthest one out of the bullseye is only four, maybe three and a half inches out. So that'll do. I'll shoot a couple more and I could probably drop my pins just a touch. I might do it, we'll see. Well, that one blew through, so we'll never know. I'll take that. Yeah, that's good. So, more money. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna go hunting. What do you think? You having fun? Got into the blind a little bit late. Um, just trying to get everything dialed in. Took a little bit longer than we thought it would, but we're here now. Brendan went to park the truck and he's gonna walk back in. Should have been doing all this an hour ago, but first morning we're just getting stuff figured out. Um, if Antelope comes in today, we're gonna shoot him. Hope he does. We might just spend a whole day looking at cows because this pond yesterday was covered in them. Big buck on his way to the water. Right there. He was coming really fast, now he's held up looking at us. He's coming. As you saw, I shot twice. That antelope was at 24 yards. I drew. For some reason, I think I hit the wall and I bumped my release and it went off and I shot under him. And I'm like, oh, game over. Well, then he comes to 40, it stops. I go to shoot and I hit the blind. So, that's a big O for two. Well, we had a fun morning hunt, didn't we, Ridge? Mm -hmm. You want to tell them what happened? We didn't shoot an animal, but we found one. <laughs> That's right. We didn't shoot it, but we found one, huh? So we're actually headed home. We sat in the blind um, for about six hours total. Uh, Ridge was a champ. He's a pretty good hunter, huh? Those animals probably would have looped around and came back, but I just kind of got to the point where... I felt like it probably wasn't that fun for him anymore. I wanted it to end on a fun note, like when we were walking back to the truck, it was hot, he was tired, he started to get a little upset. So I decided, you know what? Let's call it, let's go home, and 
we'll go get an ice cream. And I will keep this light and fun. Like more than anything, I just want him to love the outdoors. I want him to love hunting. But if he doesn't, I still hope he'll love spending time with his dad. We're gonna head home now. Um, and I just wanna thank you guys for a couple things. Um, I wanna thank you for watching this video, first of all, and following along with what, what I'm doing. But man, you guys, I was just completely overwhelmed um, with uh, with the comments from my last video. Um, just so, so much support and so much love from you guys that I, I feel it, I feel it. And, it. and it just changes the way I, I approach this and it changes the way I look at this. And just thank you guys, thank you for supporting me. I had so many, uh, orders for apparel too right after that video ended so thank you guys for supporting me in that way as well um i want to get back to the thing where i thank people by name for buying apparel so i'm going to do that right now i'm a pretty good multitasker but i'm not read a list of people and talk to the camera good at multitasking so we're just gonna we're gonna halt it right here um so first of all i want to thank nick emerton i know nick sent me a message on instagram and i appreciate you nick for buying a couple hats i also want to say uh thanks to daniel borier i'm probably saying it wrong uh, but thank you, Daniel, for purchasing some apparel. I want to say thank you to Cole Bueller. Uh, I want to say thank you to um, Omar Contreras. Omar, I see your uh, comments on here all the time, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I also want to thank Donald Shepard. Donald also sent me a nice message, a nice email. And I appreciate that, Donald. I appreciate you sending me uh, uh, the encouragement and sort of supporting me. So, But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Thanks for listening to me blabber about all this stuff that's really important to me. But sometimes I wonder if it's important to everybody else. But mostly, thank you for sharing your support and your positivity with me. We're going to keep going. I'm going to figure out how to get Richie out on some more hunts, and we will keep doing this. We'll see you later.